Good morning, first grade. Today, we are going to learn the answers for the addition facts called the adding zero and the adding one facts. You will also learn words mathematicians use when they talk about addition problems. You can see I have these problems already written for you on this board. Each of the numbers being added is called an addend. Here in blue, you can see the word addend. So if I look at this problem right here, one plus zero, the one is an addend and the zero is an addend. And why? Well, do you see the word add in addend? The small word add and addend is telling us that we need to add or combine those numbers together. Now, over here, the answer to what I add up, the answer to my add-ins is going to be my sum. So the sum, when we add zero to a number, is always going to be the number. When we add zero to a number, the answer is the same or identical. So down here, you see I have something called the additive identity. Additive identity is zero. Zero is called the additive identity. So let's take a look at these problems. We're gonna to point to the problems, and as I point to the problems, you're going to think to yourself what the answers are going to be. You can say them out loud in the video. It's not a big deal either way, but we're gonna go through these problems. Zero plus zero equals three plus zero is going to be. And why do I know that that's true, you guys? If I have three triangles plus no more, how many do I have? I have three. That's why that works. Six plus zero equals six. Nine plus zero equals nine. One plus zero equals one. Four plus zero equals four, five plus zero equals, seven plus zero equals, two plus zero, and eight plus zero. It's gonna be eight. Now, nothing is different if I write them the other way. So if I put zero plus six, or zero plus seven, or, zero plus four, nothing changes. Because here I still have four of something and I don't have zero. I have zero of, on the other side as my add-in. So how many circles do I have here? I still have four. So it doesn't matter that my add-in order has changed. What matters is my answer has not changed. So what is zero called? Zero is called the additive identity. Now, I want you to take a look at something. Now, first grade, take a look at these problems here. What do you notice about these problems? What's changed? Well, the only thing that's changed is the fact that instead of adding a zero, I'm going to add one to it. And if I'm going to add one to it, instead of zero to it, my adding of one here tells me that I'm going to go one more than the number that I already had. So. 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. What about 3 plus 1? What's 1 more than 3? 4. What about 6 plus 1? 6 and 1 more. What's 1 more than 6? 7. 5 plus 1? One? 1 more than 5 is 6. 2 plus 1? One. 1 more than 2 is 3. 4 plus 1, 1 more than 4 is 5, 
seven plus one, one more than seven is eight. Nine plus one, one more than nine is 10. Eight plus one, one more than eight is nine. And one plus one is two. Okay, now look at these two problems. How are these two problems the same? Well, as you can see here, the add-ins four and one are the same in both of the problems. And guess what? My sum is the same too. How are they different? The order has been changed. That's the only thing different. Mathematicians know that when the add-ins are the same but in a different order, that the sum is gonna be the same. And they call this something special. They call this the commutative property of addition. So the commutative property of addition is when the add-ins are the same for the problem and the sum is the same, but they're switched around. So, five, let's try this one. Five plus one equals six and one plus five equals six. That's an example of the commutative property of addition. Because the add-ins are the same, my sum is still the same, but the add-ins are switched around. Now, first grade, you need to get out your lesson worksheet 10-1, and it says A and B on it. Go ahead and grab that out and meet me right back here. All right, first grade, this is the worksheet I was talking about, lesson worksheet 10-1A. The B is on the back side. So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is make sure that our name is on our paper. And then we'll be ready to get started. So if your name is not on this paper, please go ahead and make sure that it gets onto this paper for you. All right, now look at the problems in box A. This is box A right through here. In box A, what do you notice about these facts? Hopefully you notice that they are following the commutative property of addition, right? So we need to go ahead and show the commutative property of addition in all these facts. So what is two plus zero? It's two. Now what's the other way to write it? Instead of two plus zero, if I switch these two around, I would have zero plus two. And what would my answer still be? It's still two. Three plus zero equals three. And what's the other way to write that? Reverse it. Zero plus three equals three. Four plus zero equals four. And the other way to write that? Zero plus four equals four. Five plus zero equals five. And the other way to write that? Zero plus five equals five. Make sure that your numbers are being written correctly. First grade, Mrs. Dorsey and I are realizing as we're going through your work from this last week that we have a couple of friends who are struggling with making sure their numbers are the right way and their letters are the right way. So when you're doing your writing, please go ahead and just double check that your numbers are the correct direction. Six plus zero equals six and zero plus six equals six. Seven plus zero equals seven and zero plus seven equals seven. Eight plus zero equals eight. So the other way, zero plus eight equals eight. Nine plus zero equals nine. And the other way to write that, zero plus nine equals nine. Now, if we go down to part B, what you should notice is that everything is the same except instead of adding plus zeros, we're adding plus ones, right? So we have to do the same thing as we just did in part A. 
now down in part B. One more than three is four. Now I need to switch these around. One plus three equals four. Four plus one equals five. One plus four equals five. Five plus one equals six. And I have to reverse it for the commutative property. In first grade, once you get the hang of this, you'll realize that it's really pretty simple. Last one, nine plus one equals 10. And now we have to reverse that, don't we? One plus nine equals 10. On the back side of this paper is a letter for your parents about our fact practice. So make sure that they see this. This paper, I do not need back. This paper you can keep at home. On the back side, these are all of your new facts, okay? You will be tested on these next week, not this week, next week. So make sure that you're practicing them when we're going over them in school, as well as at nighttime, okay? So save this, don't write the answers in, but then what you can ask an older brother or sister to do, or a parent, or an auntie or an uncle, or a cousin or whomever you have around you, you can have them point to one of these for you. So they pointed to this one, so now I have to answer. Two plus one is three. Then they point to another one. Oh, two plus zero is two. Then they can say, oh, this one. One plus four is five, right? And they can go through and they can test you, quiz you on those in random order. Don't do them in, in just regular order. Do them in random order, just like you would normally see them. Okay, so that sheet you can keep at home so you can practice. The other sheet you are going to do for your homework tonight. So go ahead and make sure that you have a problem solving worksheet out. Please go ahead and make sure that your name is on your paper and also the date. And today is September 15th. 2020. Now, here's what we want to do. We want to use logical reasoning and we want to be able to act a problem out. So we are going to use the problem solving process to solve the problem. Four words at the top of your paper tell us the steps in the problem solving process. Okay. Understand. Plan solve, and then check. So here we're going to read the problem and we're going to figure out how to solve it. Here we go. Maria, Jose, and Zania are standing in line at the door. Jose is last. Maria is not first. Show who is second in line. Now, what is something that we know from this problem? We know that Jose is last, don't we? And we know that they had a door and they were gonna be in line at the door. Now, the problem is asking us who is second in line? Who is second in line? We have to plan how we're going to solve the problem. When we make a plan to solve a problem, we choose a problem solving strategy. For this problem, we can use a strategy called logical reasoning. When we use logical reasoning, we act like a detective and we use the clues in the problem to help us figure it out. We can also use a strategy called act it out. Let's use the problem solving strategies of logical reasoning and act it out to solve the problem. So. If we were at school, I would have three friends come up and I would give you each one of the names, Maria, Jose, and Zania. But for this, I'm just going to go ahead and draw it out, okay? So we need to line them up at the door correctly. We're going to have three friends. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw them because they're in a line and I have them spread out a little bit here. 
And then what we want to do is we want to see how they're going to line up at the door. It says Jose is last. So the child who would have been Jose would have made sure they were at the end of the line. I'm gonna write Jose on the line. Then it says Maria is not first. So can Maria be here? No, Maria has to be here. And that means that Zania is going to be at the front of the line. So the question that asks us, who is second in line? Well, how did we show that Jose was last? We put him at the end of the line. How did we show that Maria was not first? Well, we put her in the other spot there. And then Zania was the last one. So our reasoning said, well, she's gotta go right there. So who was second in line? Remember we have first, second, and third. So second in line is going to be Maria. So you're going to go ahead and put Maria on the line right here where it says who is second in line. You're going to go ahead and write Maria. Now, on the back side, this is what you're going to do on your own. Please make sure that your name is on your paper. Then you will need to go ahead and read this problem with an adult or an older child at home if you need help reading. Then you're going to show which book is at the bottom of the stack. Are you going to act it out or are you going to use logical reasoning? Are you going to draw it out? That would be parting, part of acting it out and then explain how you got your answer. So there's a little bit of writing involved on this. I want you to go ahead and give this your best shot. Do your best trying, um, draw out the pictures. That always helps me. Um, you can even put the desk there if you would like to, uh, to help you with that and put the books on top of the desk. You don't have to have anything fancy, okay? Your desk can be something as simple as this. It could just be this, or you could give it some legs, and then you go ahead like this. It could look like that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy dancy. It could have drawers here. Here's a drawer, here's a drawer, here's a drawer if you want, okay? It doesn't have to, but it can, okay? And then when you're uh, reading through, then you're going to go ahead and draw books because it says the books are in a stack. So you'll put the books in a stack and then you're going to label the books or color in the books to know which color it is so that you can find your answer. If you're doing it this way first grade, you're probably going to be using acting it out just so you know. You're acting it out by putting the books on top of each other. So that would even help you with your answer, wouldn't it? Okay. So side B here is for your homework, so make sure that this goes back in your Tuesday folder when you are done. And then tomorrow we're gonna move on to lesson 11. We're gonna have our math test at the end of the week. All right, we'll see you back here for math tomorrow.